What's up? What's up? What's up, my voicey gang? Cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktails. 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 Good morning, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Okay, y'all, this morning, it's going. we're going to keep it simple this morning. We're going to have us some Fruit Loops. Just a bowl. I want cereal. I, you know what? I love, 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 me some damn cereal. Do y'all hear me? So, I woke up this morning. I said, Michael, what comedian Michael Allen? What kind of, what you going to do for breakfast? And I happened to look up and I saw Fruit Loops and Fruit Loops said, hey, Toucan Sam, bring your ass over here and eat me as I am. Welcome, my 4C gang for life, to another episode of Cooking with Your Boy, comedian Michael Allen. Well, I look good, I cook good, and I sound good. What? Okay, so, how y'all doing this morning on this Friday morning? It's Friday, y'all. What y'all got planned? What y'all gonna do this Friday? Y'all know what I think I'm gonna do? I got a taste for uh, some crab, king crab leg. So, I don't know if I'm gonna go to Kroger's. I need to call them and ask them, you know, do they have any and what did it cost? Or if I'm gonna go to the Easter Market. So, with that being said, with that being said, oh, I love this. I love, you know what, y'all? I love sugar so much that sometimes I add sugar to the cereal that already has sugar in it. Come on, don't judge. What? Don't judge me. Judge your damn self. Okay, y'all. I even have to give this disclaimer up early in the morning. Early in the morning, I got to get this claim, disclaimer up. If this y'all first time coming into my channel, or to our 4C Gang channel, where we do cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktail, and, 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 and you weak, you're timid, your feelings get hurt real easy, you can't believe that somebody talked to you that way, oh my God, all of that. That bitch assness, we don't allow that here. We don't allow that on this channel. You got to go somewhere else with that. Uh-uh. Go over there to Stroke My um, Ego um, channel, whatever. The, you know, this ain't the one. But anyway, other than that, welcome. We love you. But we don't love you more than we love ourselves. <laughs> Baby, you got to love yourself. Love your damn self. I don't need nobody to love me. <laughs> well, you know. It ain't gonna make a break a nigga. What? How y'all doing on this day? Everybody, I was one. Oh, I got a question. How many people gonna celebrate Fourth of July? I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not barbecuing. I'm, I refuse to celebrate that day. Mm. Do y'all know what? It would kill me. Two things would really kill me if this happened in my life. If I became lactose intolerant, baby, oh, would not be able to have milk or cereal or dairy products. Oh my God, I would just kill myself. That and if. I had like high cholesterol and could not have any fried food. My God, my God. Or I became a diabetic. I remember my grandmother became a diabetic. It got to the point where I hated eating over her house. Because why everybody got, I, would, I used to look at her and be like, girl, you diabetic, not me. She would cook her chicken and take the skin off. Oh, but I knew she was doing it to say, you know, I love you, Grandma. But she would um, take the skin off. And, you know, that is my favorite part of the, my favorite, my favorite, favorite part of the chicken. And then she would make, she wouldn't put sugar in her sweet potato pies no more. She tried to make up by putting coconut. That didn't do it for me. Uh-uh. 
I said, Gigi, can you at least just make, make one more sugar in it for me? Huh. So, my doctor called me one time at home. I said, hello. I said, yes. They was like, um, Michael. I said, hey, how are you, doc? See, we got that type of report because I'm one of those people. I go to the doctor. My mama called me a hypochondriac. But you know what? This hypochondriac, anything I've had, I caught it right like that. Yeah, you know, black folk, black men in particular, y'all kill me. Something wrong, you're hurting like hell, and you want to wait till you, it's just unbearable. As soon as I feel that one little, uh, I'm like, oh, shit, what's wrong? Let me go. I'm doing, they know me in emergency by my first name. Oh, here come Michael. You're damn right. I want to know what's wrong with me, god damn it. We got some emergency. This a motherfucking emergency for me. You don't know what my motherfucking emergency is. I got a bump on my hand, and I want to know what the hell it is. <laughs> but, um, ha. Uh, I do go to the doctor for some shit. I'm I mean through the emergency and all. So anyway, my doctor said, Do you eat a lot of fried food? I wanted to say quiet is kept I'm frying some pork chowder now. He said, because we're monitoring your cholesterol. I said, oh shit. So I started baking a lot because I love to eat. So I can do some bake this, but I got to have some fried this too. So at least as long as I don't take it out completely. That was several years ago. I've been frying ever since. I'm one of those people. I don't know if it's just me. I love when I'm in the hospital. I love it. Okay, don't judge me. Judge your damn self. When I'm in the hospital, it's like a vacation for me. When they say to me, when I go in the emergency, oh, I can act. Y'all know I'm an actor. Oh, y'all need to watch some of my play. I'm an actor. I go through emergency. I can act. First, if I want to stay. <laughs> mm. And they be like, we're admitting you. I'm like, oh. They be like, we're going to just keep you for observation. I'm like, oh. Because when I'm in the hospital, see, a lot of people look at being in a hospital as something bad or a burden. For me, I look at it like this. Okay, the first thing I do when they admit me, I start playing in that bed because I love that bed. I call the nurses three or four times. Just says, can I get some water, some juice, some snacks? Um... I always look at the menus and see what they, I love. Oh, this one hospital, they have the best barbecue chicken. And I always try to get in there the day before they having that chicken so I can make my order. And I always order double. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all better brace when you're in the hospital, honey. For me, it's like being in a mansion. That's how I look at it. Being in a mansion with servants and employees. You can call them. Can you clean up my room? Can you make up my bed? Oh, my God. Oh, and don't let me be getting pain medicine, baby. I'll be on that pain medicine. Jesus. Now I'm in my mansion. I'm feeling good. I got all my servants. And I'm high. And I'm, oh, come on. It don't get no better than that. And you get three lovely meals a day. My big sis, Phil. <laughs> Eat with Philly Phil. I have had her laughing. She said, where you about to go? I said, oh, I'm going to go to, I'm going to the hospital for a couple of days. She'd be like, what? I'd be like, yeah, girl, I, I need a little rest. <laughs> I need to be weighted on hand and foot. Come on, that's all I look at. Oh, I get mad when they be like, the doctors will come in and be like, okay, Miss, Miss, uh, Michael, you know, everything, all the tests came back negative and, you know, you're looking good, so... We think we're going to um, discharge you today. I'd be like, I think you should give me one more day because, and they always give me one or two more days. I really like being in the hospital. I'm serious. And I know, is that, is that a, do I have a problem? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. 
You got your own phone. I mean, it's comfortable. Oh, you see people walking past your room. You can have your door open or closed if you want to. Huh. You can get to, you can get have them give you a sponge bath, lay them right there in your bed. I think the nurses used to argue over who was gonna give me my sponge bath. Uh uh-uh, uh, uh uh, I'm doing them. I'm doing them. I'd be like, hold up, it's enough dick around, enough dick for all y'all. All y'all can touch it. <laughs> what? Don't judge me. Judge your goddamn self. I can't help it if I'm blessed. Ah. Oh. I remember one when I was doing my okay I've been telling too much information on this motherfucker don't I but I don't give a damn it's my channel judge your damn self don't judge me when oh this is so good when I was doing chemo and they was doing my chemo through a catheter and uh only me now. Everybody knows what a catheter is, right? Hopefully you do. They would numb me down there and stick this catheter in. But I knew every Friday I had to go have this catheter. And it was like one of the most uncomfortable pains that I ever experienced. And Lord, thank you, Jesus. I ain't got to go through it no more. Holla, Shahan, did not yet. But anyway... I would smoke me a joint or a blunt before I go now. Because I'm like, you know what? This is my old freaky, kinky shit that I got to do every Friday. I got to go in there. I got to get butt naked from the waist down. Lay there and they play with my penis. Playing with my penis all the time. Everybody, doctor looking at my penis. The nerd looking at my penis. The anesthesiologist looking at me. I mean, everybody. Just, 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 just. You walk in my room, ain't nothing but dick. Jesus. But one day I went in there, <laughs> my kinky, freaky, nasty, low down, nasty air kept getting excited. And I don't think they can put the tube in while you're excited. And I don't know who in the world gets excited right before a chemo. <laughs> and the lady kept saying, she said, Miss, she said, Michael, are you ready? I said, um, can you give me a few minutes? I said, oh my God, should I go in the bathroom and touch myself? Why? Why? Go down. Go down, damn it. And the more I kept thinking about it to go down, the more it wanted to say, hey, how everybody doing? Oh, I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. Mm. I've never been that embarrassed in my life. Mm-hmm. My nurse I had, <coughs> her name was Jody. She would always stick the, the thing in. And I would purposely never look her in the eye because she had to grab my private part. And when she would grab it, I would always not look her because I didn't want that eye to eye contact. And one time she happened to look at me and I happened to look at her. Oh, that was the most uncomfortable moment, but it felt so good. Oh. I, I remember. Okay, you guys, that was my neighbor. He always giving me stuff. He gave me some Alvino. This is low therapeutic lotion. All right, I got three of them. Thank you. So anyway, let me get back to the story right quick. So, <clears throat> I made her look in the eye one time. I said, oh my God. It was an uncomfortable moment, but it felt so good. So, my last day of chemo treatment, she was like, Michael, I know you're happy. She said, but I'm going to miss you. I wanted to say you're going to miss this big old mandingo. That's what you're going to miss, my big old mandingo right there. I said, no, Jody. I said, we're a couple. She was like, what? I said, we're a couple. Because mind you, I had 27 rounds of chemo. I said, Jody, uh-uh, we a couple, white lady. I said, Jody, we go together. We a couple. She said, oh, oh Michael, she said, I'm married. I said, well, I'm your side, nigga. 
And she looked, I said, because you didn't touch me there 27 times. I love you. <laughs> I'm in love now. And she just fell out like I said, I said, girl, I'm going to be back here next week. Even though it ain't no chemo, I'm going to be in there swinging it. Jody. <laughs> oh, she laughed. When I sent her some flowers and I sent her a card because she was so nice. And she made my time going through that chemo so comfortable. And I mean, because you got to realize that's that's really awkward going in there and somebody touching your penis every time you go in there. And white woman with small hands. She got to take both her hands to hold your stuff. One time she slipped and it poked her in the eye. No. <laughs> All right, y'all, y'all know what? I can sit here and talk about my private part all day. Mm. So, um, if this is your first time, please do me a favor. If you like to laugh, if you like, if you like my little stuff that I do, the little com I love telling story. I love telling y'all about my life. The, the the parts that I want you to know. <laughs> never, never, that's another thing in life. Don't tell people all your business because that'd be the first thing they do is throw it back up in your face. Mm -hmm. But look, do me a favor. Go down there, hit like, subscribe, make a comment. Let's talk. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, share the video, please. Come on, y'all. We are almost 181. I think we're at 180 now. That's 120 people we need. To get to one k and hit that bell, hit that bell, ding a ding a ding a ding a ding a ding. Oh, ain't that a my? That was talking about my ding a ling. Now you hit the bell, and that says ding. Okay, y'all. This probably one of the nastiest video. This probably one of the nastiest videos I ever did. So do me a favor, hit that bell. So every time I do a video, you will be notified. Okay. Thank you for doing another, joining me on another episode of Cooking with Comedian Michael Allen. Even though I didn't cook shit this time, did I? But, I love me some good, good fruit love. Oh, let me do a thumbnail. Shut the hell up. I talked to my phone. Let me do one without. <laughs> Okay, you got it. So remember, love yourself, but don't ever love anybody more than you love yourself, okay? Because I love you, but not as more than not more than I love myself. All right. My 4C game. Cooking comedy, cussing and cocktail. Cooking comedy, cussing and cocktail. Cooking comedy, cussing and cocktail. 4C game for life. All right. Love you guys. You have a nice, beautiful, blessed day. Enjoy it. Enjoy every moment of it. All right? This is comedian Michael Allen, and I'm out. Peace.